Welcome back, everybody. You're listening to The Peter Schiff Show with my guest, Peter Wallingson, who was a member of the uh, commission that was investigating the cause of the financial crisis. And I put investigating and cause in quotes because obviously that is not why the commission was convened. Like most Washington commissions, they're convened. It's a pretense. The government wants to do something, and so it convenes a a commission to validate what it wants to do. It makes the public believe there's actual investigation going on, but none of that is actually happening. It is a fraud. It ought to be illegal. It's certainly a waste of money. I forget how much. Was it 9 or 10 million they spent on this thing, or was it more than that, Peter? I think it was about 10. 10 million. Now, let me ask you, at the end, after all the witnesses testified, and of course not a one of them, you know, forecast the event in advance. But after all the witnesses testified and all the evidence, was there any deliberation among the committee members? I mean, did, did, did you guys get to talk? Did you, did you get to say, hey, you know, I think it was too much government that caused the problem, not, not too little? Um, very good question, Peter. Uh, no, the answer is no. We did ultimately get to talk about that subject, but by that by that time, it was too late. We should have talked about that subject. We should have, should have sat around the table and debated what we thought were the causes of the financial crisis in when we first got started, which was in the fall of 2009. We didn't. Um, we were handed a list of the hearings that were going to be held, uh, even though there was no description of why or no, even, no understanding, really, of why those particular hearings were important. The way a commission ought to work, of an investigation commission of, of the kind we had, was for us to start at the beginning and decide what areas we wanted to investigate and direct the staff into those areas. So it, it was, the it was kind of like then supplement that. But it was kind of like the way this worked. Yeah, so it sorry? was kind of like it was kind of like a trial, and you're the jury members, but you didn't even see the whole trial. They only directed you to certain testimony and certain parts of the trial, and then you guys didn't even deliberate on your own. You just decided whether it was guilty or, or, or innocent? Yeah, you know, I mean, it wasn't even close, wasn't even close to that. Um, the, in the end, we got a draft from the staff. Uh, the commission members did not participate in most of these. Uh, only a, we only participated in a fraction of uh, the interviews of witnesses, and those were the ones that were in the public hearings, there were 19 days of public hearings during this, this year, um, but there were 700 other witnesses, as I mentioned before, and we didn't participate in any of that. The staff participated in that. The staff was picked by the chairman. Um, if one reads through the, the report, you see that most of what is in the report is based on statements that were made in these interviews. So-and-so told FCIC this. So-and-so told FCIC that. And that is presented as evidence, even though, of course, there was no one there to question it. There was no one there to hand documents to the witness and say, well, you said the opposite uh, three weeks ago. (laughs) When did did Congress require Fannie and Fetty to start buying up those those mortgages? 1992. It was a uh, an act in 1992 that imposed the uh, affordable housing. All right, so why do you think it took until 2007 for the problem to be created? I mean, do you see other factors that 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 intervened during that time period that that exacerbated it? No. It, what the fact is that the in, the imposition occurred in 1992, but the Department of Housing and Urban Development was given the authority to administer those requirements. The original requirements were that 30% of all the purchases of loans had to be affordable. Uh, By 1995, that had become 42%. By by 2000, it had become 50%. By uh, by uh, 2007, it had become 56%, and HUD had added sub-goals of various kinds that required Fannie and Freddie to make loans to people who are at 80% of the median income, and in some cases at 60% of the median income. So the, the goals got tightened, they got uh, tougher, and they required Fannie and Freddie to go deeper into the subprime market. In addition, Fannie and Freddie were put into competition, in effect, with FHA, that is the Federal Housing Administration, which was a government agency that was also supposed to make loans to the same people who are low-income um, members, and also the banks under the, something called the Community Reinvestment Act, 
were also required to make loans to the same people. So you had four groups going after loans to people who were at or below the median income. It is not possible to find prime loans in that group by definition. Right, and of course what happened too, by bringing in all these new buyers that prior were absent from the market, they started bidding and competing with prime buyers for mortgages. They exactly. created more demand for housing, and they created a sense where since people were now able to buy houses without having to put the money down, uh, you know, they really didn't even care what they paid. So they would just get in bidding wars because what did they care? It wasn't even their money, and they, they all thought they were going to get rich. I think part of the problem, too, uh, is that Fannie and Freddie, every time housing prices went up, they would just increase – the the, the 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 values about which they would they would guarantee loans instead of holding tight and saying look we're not going to guarantee a mortgage if the house is above a certain price they kept raising the levels uh, to meet the the rising market which in effect was feeding uh, the bubble but I also think the important thing that I think everybody on the commission uh, missed was the role that the Federal Reserve played with keeping interest rates so low for so long. That's what really, when you combine that with these Fannie and Freddie guarantees and get, buying up the mortgages, that's what that that's what enabled all the teaser aids. That's what kept the arms so popular, enabled people to really stretch and buy homes they couldn't afford. In fact, I saw an interview on CNBC with the head of Fannie Mae, and I remember when he said that going forward, we're going to start making sure that we only guarantee mortgages if people can afford to repay them. Uh, in the past, they were guaranteeing mortgages simply based on their ability to afford the teaser rate, even though they knew they knew that the borrowers would not be able to make the payments once they reset. But in this guy's words, and I'm not making this up, he said that people were making a lot of money speculating in the real estate market, and he didn't want to stand in the way of that. He didn't want to tell people they couldn't buy houses they couldn't afford because they were making money doing it. How's that for a government-sponsored enterprise? <laughs> Yeah, well, there were a lot of problems there, and that, and uh, one of the problems was that they didn't have a real interest in making sure that what they bought were solid loans because they were under a government requirement that did not require solid mm -hmm. loans. It required loans to certain kinds of people. Well, the bottom line uh, that is that was the fundamental problem. So, since we obviously learned nothing. Looking what the government is doing now, are we repeating the mistakes that caused the last crisis? I mean, what's going on now in the housing market with uh, FHA and, and Fannie and Freddie? FHA is continuing the same process, I'm afraid, and their losses will eventually come to light. Um, they will be – well, I saw a recent study uh, by Barclays Bank suggested that uh, what's baked in the cake at FHA right now is about $130 billion in losses. I wouldn't – I, I'm not at all surprised at that. Fannie and Freddie has changed uh, because there's much more focus on them now, and uh, their standards have gotten uh, tougher. Uh, if they had followed these standards before, we probably wouldn't have had a financial crisis. But under a new regulator, their standards have gotten tougher. FHA, not so. Um, and, eventually and that's why, if you look at what a percentage now, right, FHA is now guaranteeing, what about, or doing 25% of the mortgages? No, higher. It's close to 50 or 60%. 50? Yeah. And what was it a few years ago? Um, nine, ten. <laughs> so in other but words, Fannie and Freddie were Fannie and Freddie were outbidding, outbidding FHA. They they had more money, and uh, than, than and the, the private did. the private subprime market is pretty much gone, right? They learned their lesson. Uh, yeah, that's there. There really is very little, very little private subprime lending now. But all the subprime is now being done by the FHA. I uh, almost entirely yes. So, so they've learned nothing. So rather than ending subprime, we've just put it all on the books of the taxpayer, and we're still doing it. Mm -hmm. That's right. <laughs> I'm afraid that uh, un until we uh, decide how to change the structure of our uh, housing market finance system, uh, we're going to continue to do things like this. Uh, and that's the, that is what the next Congress, this, the Congress that is in session right now, has got to do. So yeah, we have I to rely, they're gonna blame... I think, on the Republicans, especially the Republicans in the House, to come up with a system that does not rely on the government and eliminates Fannie and Freddie. 
Well, that's what we need to do, and the FHA. But unfortunately, we're probably going to have to have another massive crisis. And I bet the losses at the FHA will be much higher than what you mentioned because they're based on a lot of rosy assumptions. And I still don't think uh, Fannie and Freddie's standards are high enough, especially when we get a big increase in interest rates. Imagine if mortgage rate went to 10%. What would happen to those mortgages? Anyway, thanks very much. We're running out of time. Really appreciate your work on that commission and, uh, and, and what you're doing. Thanks a lot, Peter, for coming on. Thank you, Peter.